guys, what's up? It's Sally Hardesty and today's video is going to be a story time. This story time is going to be a lot more serious than many of my other videos just because I talk about a lot of topics that may trigger some people. So if you are someone who is triggered by suicide, sexual assault, or bullying, I suggest that you click out of this video right now. This is a video that I've been putting off for a really long time because I just didn't really know where to start when talking about it. This took place all my freshman year of high school, which was like 2011, 2012. But I decided to film it anyways because I know that it is going to help people just because this is all stuff that I was able to overcome and move on past does not mean that other people are not currently going through it. This is pretty public information at this point. The whole entire school basically found out about everything I'm going to be sharing with you. So here's my side of everything that happened my freshman year and how much it really did affect me. Leave a comment below if you would like me to talk more in depth on anything I mentioned throughout this video. Without further ado, let's just get on into it. So coming out of middle school, going into high school, I had this core group of friends that I pretty much spent every single day with and I've always been the type of person even now to have other friends outside of that just because I'm not a super clicky person like at all but this group of friends really didn't like that I was one to do that they were very possessive very controlling and I didn't even know it at the time because like I guess I didn't recognize those kind of behaviors or qualities in people because I was so young we had a specific spot that we sat in at lunch and if I wasn't there every day they would get mad at me like why are you hanging out with other friends like we don't like them I just remember feeling like I couldn't hang out with other friends besides these girls and so I slowly started to break away from hanging out with them all the time even more because of that. I still would have sleepovers with them every weekend and go check in at lunch, but like I wouldn't sit there the whole time like everybody else in the group. And they did not like that. They did not appreciate that. Freshman year continues and after a couple months have gone by, I'm not going to get into too much detail here at all. It's not something I really want to talk in depth about, but I was sexually assaulted by somebody from my high school, somebody who I thought I was friends with. And when this all happened, I was so young and naive that I didn't even realize what had happened to me. I just knew that it was not consensual. I was not a willing participant and when it happened I kept it to myself for a while and when I did finally tell people I told my group of friends at a sleepover we had I broke down crying I told them what happened I explained everything and they told me how wrong everything was and how it wasn't my fault and that I needed to tell a trusted adult my mom or else they were going to tell my mom for me and so obviously I was like I would rather tell my mom I basically got pressured into telling my mom before I was comfortable doing so or before I had even really realized what happened to me I didn't understand the event Event that took place. I just knew that I was literally having nightmares every night. It was super upsetting to me and I'm just not going to go into detail. And I know that there are a lot worse things to happen to people, but me being at such a young age and this being someone who I trusted and who I thought was my friend and them taking advantage of me in a very serious way, it was very, very traumatic and something that really haunted me for a very long time, which I'll talk about more later on in the story. So when I went to my mom, that's basically when I realized how serious what he did to me was because my mom freaked out started crying she ended up contacting the police like my dad and her went to the police and then I had to talk to some officers and they had me tell them the whole story ask me all these questions and then the guy was contacted and he had to do the same thing our stories lined up they also interviewed one of my neighbors and like it was this whole freaking thing I wasn't allowed to go to school after that because my parents didn't want people at school talking about it or me to talk about it and I was like really shooken up I literally developed PTSD from what had happened I would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and then I would go back to sleep in the morning I wouldn't even remember me acting like that like waking up sweating and panic having these kind of dreams at school when I would see this person I would freak out there were times where I had to go home early like if I literally saw this person in the halls at school I would shake uncontrollably I just like could not control my body or my emotions that group of friends who I had told ended up telling like a bunch of people behind my back everyone at school knew about it everyone was asking me about it the guy came out and talked about it and he tried to tell a completely different story even though when he spoke to the police it was the same exact story I had freshman year this is when I realized that people hear one thing and they spread it the rumor is a lot more exciting than the truth so they're going to spread that you already look bad just for being in a situation like that in general even if you are the victim even if you weren't asking for it even if you don't even want to tell your parents and snitch on that person to begin with I had so many rumors made up about me I was literally being bullied about it every single day my friends were still pretending to be my friends but were low-key going around and spreading these rumors even further and just like laughing behind my back and calling me a liar even though they knew what happened they knew the truth more than anyone because they were the first people that I had told and I told them like literally everything Basically, Basically, it got to a point that I attempted suicide. I took a bunch of pills and looking back now, I understand that everything I took probably wasn't enough to kill me. But obviously when you take any sort of pills with that intention, just like a bunch of pills, it's harmful to your body. It's not good for you. And after I did it, I told my mom that I had done that. I told her I wanted to go to the hospital. I was put on a 5150, which is basically where you're under a 72 hour hold at minimum. I was there for, I believe six nights and seven days. This happened over 2011, 2012, New Year's Eve. My best 
best group of friends were having like a New Year's Eve sleepover party and I wasn't able to go to it and I wasn't even able to contact them to tell them that I wasn't able to go. I was so devastated when you're a freshman, when you're young, like your friends are everything. Missing one little thing is such a big deal. The last thing I should have been worried about was a stupid New Year's Eve party, but I cared about that because I cared about these friends that I had or I thought I had. Get out of the hospital, I end up going over to my friend's house. They had another sleepover. They had these sleepovers like all the time. We're in her room and they're telling me all the things that I missed from the New Year's Eve sleepover. So I ended up telling them, ended up opening up to them about that and they all start getting really weird. And I get now how that could have came off because if people can't relate to what you're going through, they're just not gonna understand, they're gonna judge you. They basically just started looking at me like I was a freak. You can just tell that they're not happy about this information at all. That I no longer fit the criteria to be in their little friend group, which was so clicky in the first place. And I don't think that any of these people are bad people for behaving a lot of the way that they did when I was telling them this stuff, but still it wasn't the best response I could have gotten at the time. They went downstairs and they told me I wasn't allowed to come. I had to stay in her room. They all started drinking her dad's alcohol and keep in mind, we're like 14, 15 years old. I go downstairs to see what they're doing because I'm just like, okay, they literally left me in her room. I don't want to sit here all night. They got mad. They told me to go back upstairs. They told me that they were leaving. They were going to sneak out to the park right by her house. I was like, okay, I don't want to sneak out. That's bad. That's against the rules. Like all these things I was just not comfortable doing at the time. They went to this park across the street and I was just sitting there alone. I didn't want to be in the house with myself. Her dad was asleep. After a while, maybe another hour or so, I went outside, followed them to the park. I get there and they're like, why did you come here? We told you to stay in the house. You're not allowed to be here. And I'm like, well, you guys snuck out. You're not allowed to be here either. Like I'll honestly just have my mom come pick me up if it's like really like this, I'll just call her. They started freaking out. They're like, no, don't call your mom. Only because they were gonna get in trouble if I did that, right? Not because they cared about me actually being sad and hurt and wanting to go home. Her dad would like notice that I was gone in the morning because we were at that age where like we were still supervised pretty closely. And so one of them tried to take my phone and so I like ripped it out of her hands. And I started like running down the street. One of the girls there told me that if I wanted to die so bad, why don't I just kill myself? Why don't I just try again? That I would be better off dead. I would be less of an inconvenience to everyone. I just couldn't even believe the way my friends had like turned on me like that just for going through something very, very real. Honestly, a lot of the reason I ended up in that hospital was because they were spreading all these rumors and I was having to deal with it every day at school, but I didn't know they were the ones spreading it. So ran down the street, there was this huge ditch. I don't know if like a house was being built there or what with like some sort of basement, but it went into the ground. It was actually pretty deep. I literally ran into this ditch to get away from them because one of the girls also said that she was going to punch me in the face and she was dead serious. So I ran into this ditch and then the girls whose house I was staying at followed me down there and she's pleading with me crying like, Allie, no, please get back in the house. Like we care about you. Just saying all this stuff literally so she won't get in trouble with her dad that I left. And so after like 20 minutes of that, I'm like, fine. I don't want to cause problems for anybody. I followed her back inside the house. We all went back in her room. She had a pretty big bed. And so we were all just going to sleep on it together. At least like half of us, because there was about five people, me included. And so when I went to sleep on the bed, everyone went to the floor. And then when I went to sleep on the floor, everyone went to the bed. It was just like the pettiest shit you can imagine. They didn't want to sleep by me because I was so crazy and I wasn't fit to be a part of the group anymore was basically what they were telling me verbally and with their actions. And so I eventually just ended up, I think on the corner of the floor, crying myself to sleep. When I woke up, call my mom immediately. My voice is like breaking when I call her and I'm like, hey mom, can you please pick me up? I just want to go home. Started crying the second I got into the car. I don't even know if I told my mom like every little detail because honestly, still to this day, I'm so loyal to the point where even if I'm not friends with somebody, no longer dating somebody, etc., I still want to defend them and I still don't want to make them look super, super bad. Like, I don't know why I'm like that, but I am. And it kind of sucks because I wish I could just go around exposing people, but I really do not have that in me. Time goes on, I'm no longer hanging out with them at school. Thankfully, I have those other friends that like I've been friends with outside of that group. I ended up finding out around this time that they were the ones who had basically went out there and spread a lot of those rumors or at least contributed to them a lot. It also didn't help that the guy who sexually assaulted me was so popular at our school. So the opposite of whatever you would think who would do that to somebody, like nobody really believed me. In those cases, it's a lot easier to blame the girl unless the guy already has a reputation for that. Even though I don't understand understand how I lied because I never really told people my story. People didn't even bother to ask and if they did they were just interrogating me. After I stopped being friends with these girls they basically started going around the school telling people that I was crazy and that I tried to kill them and that I also tried to kill myself at 
their house. Don't you think that you would have woken up your dad or called my mom or called the police? Don't you think that things would have went down a little differently versus me still spending the night? That was a real rumor and some people actually believed it or at least believed it because that was the popular thing to do. They for some reason thought it was really funny to make fun of the fact that I had attempted suicide. I have posted a picture on Instagram. I just made an Instagram and this is when Instagram was like brand new when they really didn't have any of the features that they have now. It was just basically posting pictures on the app with one of like the standard filters. I was uploading like a million things because I basically considered it just a photo editor app. I didn't understand that it was sort of like a new Facebook or Twitter. And I had this iPod at the time, this iPod touch that had a million pictures. And a lot of the pictures were of me and that friend group because I was friends with them for so long with them like all the time. And our thing was that we would always take all these group photos together. I had posted a picture onto the Instagram app of me and like the other girls in that group with grapes in our mouth, like blowing up our cheeks like a chipmunk. And we thought it was really funny when we took the picture at the time. I genuinely was not trying to be malicious posting it at all. They started like cyberbullying me on Instagram in the comments, calling me all these names. I was in the picture too. It was literally just a silly fun picture of like my old friend group and I that like I just wasn't thinking and uploaded. And I literally got attacked in the comments for it. Just like saying the worst things you could freaking imagine, telling me to literally kill myself, telling me to die. I ended up deleting the post, but before I did, I screenshotted everything. My mom got a call from one of their moms, basically saying that we needed to have a meeting talking about what I've been doing to the girls because they went and told their moms that I was bullying them online. So we basically had to go to Starbucks, all sit down and talk, they show up, and everything that they're saying is a complete lie. I was like, well, actually, I have all the screenshots right here on my iPod, and their eyes got really big, like, oh crap. I began reading everything, and their moms are kind of like, oh, we didn't realize that our daughters were actually bullying her. Their moms still tried to, like, defend their daughters by bringing up all this other stuff after I had been reading the screenshots. Basically, the meeting was just dumb. Like, it was so stupid. I think that it's important to take something good out of every situation you go through, even the negative. And for me, I became a stronger person. Also learn to not spread rumors about people or talk bad on other people for things that are none of your business and that you know nothing about. As easily as you're hearing these things about other people, that could be you. And you don't know if it's true. Even people who seem as happy and as positive as me, because I'm like that now and I was like that before this happened, it took me away from that. I was able to hide it at school. I never acted like it bothered me as much as it did. I really hope this helps somebody out there. If it did, please give me a big thumbs up. Also leave a comment below sharing your story if you feel comfortable. I would love to read your comments. I will read all of them. I will respond to as many as possible. Subscribe if you are new here. Turn on my post notifications by hitting that bell button right next to the subscription box. Follow my social media. I will have those on the screen for you guys. Also, if you want to direct message me on any of those platforms, go ahead. I try my best to open all DMs and respond as fast as possible. I also have a Patreon if you guys want early videos, exclusive photo shoots, private Snapchat, etc. That will be linked below in the description. And I will see you guys in my next video. Later alligators. Bye.